See, the thing is with my videos, no one can ever complain that a Ryan Condom video is not filled with drama. I have got one of the most exciting videos. I don't think it's exciting, but it's drama filled. Yeah, it is exciting. This is gonna be a good video. When I sign up and start events, either running or cycling events, there is always something I attempt to do. I enter into them with an open mind, a what will be, will be kind of attitude. Especially considering I'm not a super experienced runner. However, I do feel I am progressing from a complete noob to somewhat of an intermediate, or, you know, I use intermediate with inverted commas. I'm on the start line, just arrived. This is a trail marathon I'm in, where am I? With all the thousands of miles under my belt now in training and the large number of events I have completed, my medal pile is really starting to grow. I mean, I haven't got them up on the walls. The only one I've got is this one up here, which is my London Marathon, which was a benchmark run. It was the first ever time I'd completed a major event. We're at a boarding school, which is the start and finish line. This is a loop marathon. I need to get myself sorted out. I always enter into these races for fun. The training and fitness growth is a byproduct of that fun. My priority is to have a good time. If you're enjoying it, you're more likely to want to do more of it, which helps your training and your fitness and your weight loss. I very rarely read the pre-race emails and safety briefings. I find them to be a copy and paste of all the other running events I've done. Once you've read one safety briefing in an email, you've read them all. You know what I mean. You make sure you drink plenty of water, wear sun cream, etc, etc. If I need to be told what to wear, the correct footwear, for example, for an event, then I probably signed up to the wrong event. Unless it's an event like the fan dance, which I did a month ago, where getting something wrong has serious consequences, in which case I always read the safety briefing and the emails and I take heed of them because they're for a reason. But for running events like this, which are copy and paste, I just rock up at the start line with high hopes and a song in my heart. However, this race was different and there were two things I discovered early on that caused my heart to stop singing and start pounding. The first I discovered the day before when I went to download the GPX file of the route to put on my watch. Now I knew this event was a trail marathon. I knew that when I signed up. I only signed up for it last week and I signed up to it because I was fed up with just running in my local areas. I'm training for an ultra marathon at the moment and I signed up to this marathon as just a alternative to doing a marathon around my local area which I've run a million times now. Now I knew this event was a trail marathon. I enjoyed my muddy trail marathon that I ran back in January of this year. I loved that. I really enjoyed it. The video for that is in the description so go and watch it. It is mental. It's like imagine Tough Mudder but over 26.2 miles. It was mental and it was loads of climbing as well. It was a really good event. I really enjoyed it. Now I I enjoyed that trail marathon so much that whilst looking online for a last minute marathon in the south of the country where I live, I discovered this one, the Waldenham Marathon. I think I've said that right, Waldenham? Yeah, the Waldenham Marathon and thought, what the hell? Let's do it. Let's give this one a crack. Now, as I say, I didn't read the description. I found it on a third party website that recommended giving it a go. I signed up to it. I paid the £50 entry fee and it was the only one that was 26 miles long and it wasn't a million miles from where I lived in Essex, which was perfect. I signed up for it as prep and training for this September's 100k Ultra I've got planned. So rather than just running my local trails again, I'd rock up at this fun jaunt in the sunny Surrey countryside and I thought I'd have some fun. What could go wrong? Famous last words. All together, five, four, come on, three, two, one, and you're off. And then on the start line, there was something else that I noticed. Unlike other events that I've entered, this one was different. There were probably less than 50 participants, many of which were running- I forgot to press record. The half marathon, not the full one like me. And they all looked very, very experienced and very capable trail runners. Not a single fun runner in sight. Larger events always have fun runners, people running for a charity, dressed up, etc. Not today. These semi-professionals had all challenged their inner Kipchoge looking at this strange six foot two, 95 kg guy. Press record now. Who would turn up wearing a formal shirt, which I'm wearing now, and oversized cycling glasses. I'm wearing the shirt now as penance for wearing it for this race. I looked like I'd brought a knife to a gunfight. That's very much how I felt. Okay, I'm right at the back. <laughs> I forgot to press record on my watch. That's the first kilometre done. 1k down. Only 41 and a half to go. 
and we're coming up to the first hill because I can see everyone walking and considering there's only about 50 people doing this race this is a two-part race half marathon full marathon it's a loop so those that are doing the half only do the loop once obviously I'm doing it twice but yeah here's the hill so it was only when I went to download the GPX route file for my Garmin watch that I realized that this event was actually just over 1700 feet in elevation. And that was just for the first half loop. I was doing this as a marathon distance. So I had to run this loop twice as each loop was a half marathon, obviously. This was just over 3,400 feet in elevation. So in layman's terms, it involved a lot of hill climbing. And on the start line of this event, having not read any of the pre-race details, turned up late and not really having much prep i had absolutely no idea what lay in store for me all i can say in the words of mr t from rocky i predict pain pain i'm trying really hard not to fall over there are tree roots everywhere here we go off the trail oh. back on the trail I can't even talk. I'm probably going for it. I'll probably need to rein it in a bit. This is a marathon, not a sprint, literally. I just... Just got to avoid falling over. That's all. Which I am known for. I'm wearing... I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm wearing my chilli shirt. Thought I'd wear a shirt today, formal. I thought I'd spell the occasion. I thought I'd dress the part with my spicy chilies for a spicy race. So this is a marathon. I did a park run on Saturday. And this is my marathon. This is probably a good time to mention my ridiculous chili, spicy inspired formal shirt and large white cycling sunglasses that I'm wearing in this video. As previously mentioned, I like to have fun at my events because my philosophy is if I'm enjoying it, I'm more likely to want to do more of them. I've worked hard to be able to run events like this and not be completely dropped. And having wasted 35 years of my life on the sofa, I fully intend to enjoy myself now. Having now seen the elevation from the day before, I knew this was gonna be a spicy race, which is why I decided to wear this shirt the morning of the race, because I'd just seen how much it was gonna hurt me. It had red chilies on it, red spicy chilies, which felt fitting for what was gonna be a real suffer fest. And I also had my new large white cycling sunglasses because it was really sunny and I really like them and they're bright white. There's no other reason for that, I can't justify it. I then hit these ridiculously steep steps that felt like they were a lot steeper than they needed to be. Knowing full well that I had a really good pace to this point, even passing and knocking some of those who had run off the start line a lot faster than me, I caught up with them. I could now afford to take it easy down this steep decline. How steep is this? Oh my God. This is making me go funny. This is bearing my vertigo. Oh my God, I hate heights. Why is this so steep? And anyone that's watched any of my videos before, especially my Yorkshire Three Peaks videos, will know that I suffer with vertigo. I hate heights, they make me really dizzy. Even just small heights like this. I mean, this is hardly the top of the Empire State Building, oh, but it feels like it to me. Okay, okay, get my head back together. Uh, that was horrible. I hate heights, I hate heights. Oh my God. But I've done enough of these events now to know what height. goes down must always come back up. So knowing that, it wasn't a surprise when we eventually hit that really, really big hill. Oh, it's a drop off here, look. If I go in there, I'm not coming out until the other side. Look at this view, guys. If I make this without tipping over, tippy tumble, it'd be a flaming miracle. Okay, uphill. Thing is, we're running through woods and then running through fields. 
I can't see bugger all inside the woods with these sunglasses on. When trying to keep up with those around me, I had to remind myself that most were running the half loop. This race, as I've already mentioned, was in two loops. The course was 13.35 miles in a circle. The start line is also the finish line. Most people on the start line that I started with were running this mental loop once. Only those of us who were absolute lunatics were running this loop twice. So eventually we hit that first big climb that I mentioned. This climb was appalling. So steep for a cheeky trail marathon like this. It was no longer a fun run. This was still loop number one and I knew I had to return later on in loop two to take it back on again. One thing I learned about climbing hills on trail marathons, which I learned back in January during that trail marathon, is I'm quite powerful up steep climbs where you can't run. My long legs, now helped massively by all the Zwifting and gym squats, can power up these steep old climbs really quickly, quicker than most, or at least those around me, allowing me to again pick some more people off that had sprinted off the start line. About a mile and a half. Cheers, mate. Not far to go. Thank you. This is brutal. Have a look. I do feel I need to apologise for my horrendous breathing at this point. I sound like I'm completely dying, mainly because I am. It still blows my mind how much louder I am compared to others that I'm running with. No one seems to make anywhere near as much noise as me when they're running, and I sound like an old tractor starting up on a cold winter's morning. I don't notice it when I'm running, it's only when I watch it back in edit that I realise how loud I am. There's nothing I can do about that except apologise for making you endure it. And those around me were starting to realise that this race isn't just about a fast pace. This isn't a 5k pace. This is something you need to have strategy and tactics about. And I'm talking as if I had strategy and tactics. Guys, when you see the end of this video, you will realize that is very far from the truth. Uh, I'm at the top. Oh, my God, that was brutal. That was absolutely brutal. So this course is one big loop with a section in the middle that we have to run down towards, uh, which is the halfway checkpoint. It's at the bottom of a long old hill through a huge field, meaning that we then have to turn around at that checkpoint and climb back up the way we came. And because that was the turnaround point, it was at this point that I started to see all those much faster runners in front of me turning around and coming back. It's great to see their progress, which is inspirational, not great for the morale, knowing how much further some runners are in front of my efforts. Okay. Right, we're turning around, heading back. That's half, half of loop one done. How far I still have to go to be able to keep up with them if I eventually do ever get that far, being I am 44. It's depressing because you've got to pass the people that are ahead of you. I should say, I've just had an energy gel. So I'm burning, burning through calories, burning through water. These hills are brutal. The only good thing that I kept reminding myself of is that they're obviously quite serious oh. runners who run events like this to improve their own PBs and they all, from the vests that they were wearing, run for running clubs. Know. I have no right to be anywhere near them in regards to pace or speed, but that doesn't stop me wanting to or from trying. It's impressive to see just how fast some of these runners were as I passed them, or they passed me on their way back is probably more accurate. Okay, while I'm walking uphill over these trip hazard terrain, just trying to get my breath now. That was a steep hill. The problem, not the problem, but psychologically, this route is tough. Hello, mate. Well done. Well done, mate. Um, you've got to go back on yourself. So I know I've got to do this again. So what I'm feeling, times that by 10, the next time around, I need to start running. I've been walking too long. These hills, if I run up them now, oh my God. I mean, they're just leg zapping. Because you, at some point, especially the one that we're coming up to, it's almost a scramble. There's no way you can run up that. The trick to these trail marathons, I've found for me anyway, is you run the flats, you run the descents, and you power the hills. Now, as I've mentioned already, not many were doing the full marathon. Out of the 50 or 60 that I started with, I'm not sure exactly how many, I didn't count, but they're just by 
guessing as a guesstimate i'd say it was about 50 or 60 i say that only 20 percent or so were doing two loops the rest were finishing after loop one so they could afford to push it harder than me and burn the first half of this course a lot faster and a lot harder if i knew what was good for me i'd slow it down pace myself and finish still having fun I didn't need to try and keep up with anybody, especially those that were finishing halfway. Unfortunately for me, this is me we're talking about. I do not have self-restraint or know the meaning of Hold strategy on. or forward planning. So I kept pushing the hills and for some strange reason was thinking about beating or keeping up with those around me, in front or behind me. Even though I knew from the colours on their bib numbers they were only doing one loop, I had passed quite a few that were doing two loops and was pushing this first loop far too hard for my own good. Eventually the fun would end and the suffering would put finishing this race into jeopardy. This race would eventually turn from being a fun jaunt in the Suffolk countryside into a full-blown endurance event that would challenge for the title of being probably the hardest thing I've ever had to endure this year and that includes ripping my feet apart in the Brecon Beacons last month. I think it, it must be this way. It must be. It said left on my watch. I was half hoping you know we're a tad lost. Is it left here? No. Yeah. That's the way we came up. So it must be down here. Then on our way back around the same loop, another runner and I got lost. There weren't any marshals en route and with the exception uh, of the odd markers here and yeah, there, you were left pretty much up to your own That's devices time. and navigation. And it was obvious from the start that most of the runners had done be. this route before with me back. and only a couple of other yeah. runners doing it for the first time. I know this because one of the race organizers asked us on the start line, who's doing this race for the first time? And literally, I think about three or four people put that. No, we, we're guessing now. I don't know. Unfortunately for me, I was following one of those other runners. Yeah. I followed my watch and we quickly got back on track, but annoyingly it allowed those that I had passed on the previous hills to, to catch chance. me back up on the flats. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay, there's people down there, look. I've got to come bloody back up this. Oh, don't think about it. Thank you. Get some rest. Okay, this is where we turn left. Come by uh, your side. And we head back now. This is a new route. Lay your head on so my chest. I don't know how far we got left. My watch just has the map on it. I do that on purpose. So I far. know you've had a really uh, bad day. Yeah, so my watch is blind at the moment. But I'm right here. It's gonna be. The world could fall down, it's gonna be okay The sun could go out, we're gonna be okay Now back on track, I had a few miles of challenging but relatively flat trail paths that I could enjoy before I eventually hit another monster hill and the thing that made this hill so tough wasn't just the incline but the fact it felt like it went on for ages. Now, looking at the stats, this climb was nearly 2K of non-stop climbing. And it was also used by heavy goods vehicles as access to the local farm. The ground had been churned up beyond recognition when it was wet and had now baked rock hard in the summer sun. So it was like cement and it had really deep trenches caused by the tractor tires. Now this incline and terrain was ankle breaking. And even though two ladies ahead of me were adamant to keep on running up it, they had slowed so much that my power walking was actually faster. And that meant I pretty much caught them by the time we reached the top of the climb. They then powered off on the flat but that didn't matter i was able to you know claw back some time there okay okay we're finally at the top of the hill this is brutal i'm done now i'll be completely honest i'm always strong-headed in events like this but even my over enthusiastic brain knew not to bite off more than i could chew on this first loop and with another run over this call still to come i took this section in my stride and i did slow down for the first time hello mate Oh, I should have checked the gradient before I booked this. <laughs> okay, jog one. Jog. Jog. My legs are jelly. That's power up. Power walk. Okay. Okay. 
we're good. We've caught some people up, which is good. I'm at the school. I just need to run up here, meet Tracy, and do a half time, get a half time pep talk from Tracy, and fill my water up and go again. I'm gonna try and drink some fuel. I'm feeling a bit Tom and Dick. I've struggled to eat food now when I'm this tired. I need to refill. All right, I'll meet you over there. Yeah. You're coming for a break, sir, aren't you? I'm coming, yeah, refill water. Water, fantastic. You're <laughs> welcome, sir. Thank welcome you. Back. Now, up until this point, I hadn't stopped at any of the previous pit stops on loop one, and I opted to stop and only refill my water at the halfway point. And on hindsight, this was probably a mistake. It was a really warm day. It was pushing about 28 degrees centigrade. So refilling my water was a must, but I needed to make sure I took on some food. I mentioned about trying to drink a shield drink, which is a meal replacement drink, which has loads of calories. I use these on big runs like my ultra events. In this instance, I just couldn't stomach drinking it. Okay, right. This is lap two. And I'm trying so hard not to think about what's to come. Now, not being able to eat anything, especially the shul drink, which is really like a big milkshake, oh. is a sign of dehydration and fatigue. I was feeling pretty rough now, and the thought of drinking or eating anything made me want to throw up, and that's probably the most important time to force something down, but I didn't, and that was a mistake. Okay, 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 got less to do now than I did when I started this half. I've got less to do, I'm just coming up to the first hill that I'm gonna try. I'm hardly running fast now. Pace has dropped off big time. I'm going to try and power walk this hill. I've got no one with me. Oh, I haven't seen many people with red lettering for marathon. These hills have zapped my legs, zapped my muscles are on fire. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. We're coming up to those steep steps that go down and then we've got a bit of a jog through some fields and then we've got that monster climb like vertical climb leg burning muscle destroying climb uh, so yeah oh it's going down hurts as much as going up oh. I mean I'm pleased I've done this because uh, this is good training for the Thames path I mean, my legs need it. I mean, they are destroyed now, which shouldn't be the case. I mean, this is a tough course. I now started to feel the effects of lack of food and calories, pushing those hills and finishing loop one in just under two and a half hours. I was now foobard. Look at that view. This is why, this is why I take so long. Touristing. Let me get my phone out, do a selfie. As a kid, I used to live out by a lake. No, you're right, thank you. 
excuse to stop. With lightning <laughs> bugs collecting sticks and Thank secret you. handshakes. I was invincible then. My heart so pure <clears throat> I had no fear. Okay. This is why I go to be tumble now. Down these steps. Fuck these steps. They're so high. And it felt so right. Having you by my side, I would never waste your time on mine. Oh, it's starting to rain. I don't need that. Everything we dreamt of being, we had so much fun. I'll go up there. Broken. This is tough gig. Okay. Okay. All right. This hill. This hill has annihilated me. I'm annihilated. I'm down my legs. My legs are on fire. I then hit this steep climb and I then knew I was in trouble. I almost blacked out. My vision went and I nearly hit the deck. For some reason, I don't fully understand, this event had destroyed me far more than it probably should have. Jesus Christ. I just want to say this is better than any workout in the gym. Any knee lunges or weighted squats. This is horrendous. I've done loads of events. The Yorkshire Three Peaks, the Fan Dance, the Trail Marathon back in January, Ultra Marathons. I've done loads of local 10Ks, etc. Hundreds and hundreds of training runs. So I'm not adverse to run in events like this. This event destroyed me. Thank God I haven't got to do that hill again. Something had gone catastrophically wrong, more so than just not having a few calories at halfway. There was more involved to this. Maybe it was just fatigue. Maybe it was just the fact that I'd burnt out. I've done, I've done a lot recently. I've been hitting the gym. I've been doing loads of running. I've been doing loads of cycling. So maybe I just hadn't had enough rest. I need some calories. So I just need to get to the turnaround point up here. I've got to go down another hill and turn around, come back up it. But nothing as bad as that last one. Um, yeah, my run, my run is little more than a shuffle now. Now I will just quickly add before I get the keyboard warriors jumping into the comments and pre-guessing what had called this failure in ability. I wasn't poorly prepared for it. I'd been training in build up for my ultra. So I've been doing loads of running. This was supposed to be a training run for the ultra. I knew I hadn't eaten enough at halfway, but this was also a marathon distance. So I shouldn't be this exhausted or fatigued. Looking back on it now, it felt like I was just having an off day. I can't put my finger on it. I've never felt this bad before. Well, I have, but a very long time ago. A day where things were just not going my way. Maybe I'd burnt out recently and I didn't allow myself enough recovery before this run. But again, this was supposed to be a training run. I was supposed to be fatigued going into it so I could run it tired and simulate the feeling of the second half of a 100k run, which I've got in three weeks. So I need to practice feeling this tired. But this wasn't tiredness. This was blacking out. I then arrived at the turnaround point for the second time. I stared at the table with a blank expression on my face, worried they would realize how much I was struggling. Hey, hey, Hello. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> I immediately turned around and started back up the long hill again, not wanting to give anyone time to force me to sit down. If I can't finish this marathon, what chance do I have of finishing 100? I also get some comments on my videos telling me to forget the camera and not bother recording, especially when I'm obviously struggling like this. I always say the same thing. I record and include the rough with the smooth. It's part of my fitness progress. Overcoming trials and tribulations like this is important. It's important I try to document it. I can't enjoy the PBs and medals on the back of these runs without risking failure. I always record the PBs and medals, so I need to also record the moments of pain and suffering that's led me to those PBs and medals. <laughs> The other reason I record these moments is because it's a distraction in the moment. While I'm talking to camera, I don't think about the enduring suffering I'm facing right in that moment. I find it really cathartic to record and talk to camera. I've said this in old videos. As long as it works for me, I'll keep doing it. The mic stopped connecting to the camera and I can't be bothered to fix it. 
I am too tired for that nonsense. So this is the start of this is the start of the last big hill. Once I've done this hill, uh, I'm going to tell you now the wheels. I'm going to tell. I keep thinking there's someone behind me. Um, I'm starting to hallucinate. I feel horrendous. The wheels have well and truly fallen off. I don't normally allow negative thoughts to enter my head. I try so hard to keep everything positive. And when I'm struggling, I always think about the next 100 yards. Just get to that tree, get to that road. Just think of it like that. I break it down into park run distances because I can do park runs easy peasy. Sub 28, in case you haven't watched that video. However, I'm really struggling. My legs, when I go downhill, are like jelly, like they're gonna come out from under me. Like I'm gonna collapse. And then when I'm going uphill, they just, they're just hurting. Um, I can't get my breath, no matter what I do. And this feels more than just fatigue. I know I'm making it sound pretty dramatic, but I'm just pushing 20 miles. I've still got 6.2 miles to go and I am broken. Okay, just need to get up this hill. Now, as I'm editing and watching this footage, it does feel pretty dramatic, but I'm in a bad way, guys. I've got to be honest. I haven't felt this rough for a very, very long time. I didn't okay, even feel top. this bad at the end of my Thames Path oh, 100K man. run last year. I don't know what's gone wrong. I really don't. I need to work it out because whatever's caused this, I need to make sure I don't replicate it in a few weeks. Right, sit rep. Ah, uh, oh, broken isn't the word. Ah, oh, my legs aren't working. My legs are jelly. Absolutely, this is the hardest. This is the worst I've felt ever over marathon distance. I feel horrendous. I don't even know how my legs are moving. I'm even getting cramped, which on anyway, I'm moaning. So 1K, I've got 1K left, that's it. 1K, the worst thing about this is I've already done marathon distance. Uh, I hit marathon distance about 100 yards back, or 100 meters, sorry. So I've got to do kilometer more than marathon distance. <laughs> Tracy. I then saw Tracy standing there waiting for me and this is going to sound pathetic or it's going to sound ridiculously dramatic but seeing her made my mind collapse. I knew I was now nearly finished and I could stop and sit down and it was at this point my legs completely went. I was worried that I wouldn't even finish the last 100 meters. <sighs> Please don't hold my hand. Oh, you pulled me. Oh, oh, oh. I can't, it's pulling me off balance. Okay, how far left? I've got 100 meters. I can't sprint. I can't, for the first time in my life, this is all I've got. No. Has everyone gone home? One. Oh, Jesus. One person left behind me. It's Christ, this has been a very unsuccessful, well, it's not unsuccessful, I'm finishing. But didn't go as planned. I'm gonna try and run. I crossed the finish line, immediately I was handed the smallest cup of water in the world, a medal and a t-shirt by two women who were obviously fed up with waiting for literally the slowest trail marathon runner in the world. I had finished this race in just under six and a half hours. Let me say that again. I'd finished a marathon, even though it was a trail marathon that was really hilly, in six and a half hours. I was one person away from being completely last. There was one person behind me. This was supposed to be a fun training run. It ended in a test of endurance and my ability not to pass out. It was just a get it done suffer fest. So having said that, all in all, it was a very successful training run for my ultra in a few weeks time. 
I want to say thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and see you in next week's video. Cheers, guys. Come around.